My name is York Glover. Um, I'm the secretary for the board at the Gullah Farmers Cooperative right here on St. Helena Island. We're in the Low Country, um, and St. Helena Island right now is trying to become, uh, continue uh, its tradition of farming, and the co-op is helping with that by being a marketing outlet for our farmers. We are not a um, buying co-op. We are more a, of a consignment co-op, so the farmers would bring their product here and we will try to find customers for them and uh, we then market that product we, uh, to those various customers. Right now, we are, our customers are really in the low country, primarily in Charleston, and we are trying to develop a relationship with another customer in North Carolina. Most of them are small farmers. Um, when I say small farmers, less than 100 acres. Um, but on average, we probably have farmers that about 10 to 15 acres of produce that they're growing. Most of our farmers are probably doing about three to five acres of vegetables. And we, we have the opportunity now to buy almost whatever they're growing. We started years ago, uh, about 10 years ago, and uh, with the program, we, uh, the Farm to School project, we had a relationship with three school districts, uh, Jasper, Colleton, and Buford. And we were growing collards, broccoli, cabbage, and uh, we processed those by chopping and selling it to the schools. Right now at the co-op, uh, I can tell you that um, we are still young. Uh, we're still looking at how do we grow this operation here. And some of the areas that we're looking at is uh, f uh, flash freezing. You know, uh, we're looking at doing that as well as preserving. And so that when we, we get a crop like okra coming through, um, it's a short season, but we can preserve those okra and pickle them and then have them here to sell during the year. So those are some of the things that we are looking at. Um, so as we move in a, uh, uh, to expand this operation, we're looking at not only having a cold storage here, but also a place of, uh, we can preserve our product and stuff and add value to it. My name is Charity Coleman. I am the receiving and outreach coordinator here at the Gullah Farmer Cooperative. I'm new to this first, I would like to say that. This is all stuff that I've learned since working here at the co-op. Because I, I wasn't really into it back in the day. I was just coming up in the culture, so I didn't really think about it. But going back and looking at it, I realized that they were basically brought here. When I talk about they, I'm talking about the slaves that were enslaved here on St. Helena Island. This was one of the checkpoints. So this is one of the first places that people got dropped off at when they came to, when they were brought to America. They were brought here because of their, I think they could grow rice really well. And this is things that they wanted to bring here to America so that they can create their, um, basically their, their money, the way that they make their money. So they could grow rice. They're very good aggregators. So they brought them here. They had the Carolina gold rice, that was a big thing. They don't really do any of that stuff anymore because it was kind of lost over time. But there was a time when it was a big, a big business down here. But after a while, they left them here and that was when the culture basically started to grow in itself. They were still, they had trouble speaking the, the American language, the dialect that they were using. So that's where the Gullah Geechee slang came in at. That's how they started short, shortening words and making it so that they could communicate with each other because they didn't have the help of the outside world after a while. And then that's also where like the rice came from, red rice, we have macaroni, we have collard greens, they have the pig feed, they have oxtail, things like that that were basically the scraps that nobody ate and they would give them to the slaves. So that was basically the meals that they had to eat. So that's why today we eat collard greens on Thanksgiving and we have sweet potatoes and stuff like that. They didn't have sweet potatoes in Africa, but they had yams. And yams were like, sweet potatoes are our version of the yams. That was the best that they could do when they got here. So that's what they've been doing. So we have those things. We got gumbo, jambalaya, all those things are from Africa. And that's why when people go back and they have the jollof rice and stuff like that, it's so similar to what we eat here because it's basically a direct 
it's directly from that. So we basically took those things and made it to what we could here. We had tomatoes, so we used tomatoes. We had the okra and we could make the, um, they had a filet powder that they made up there, but we couldn't use that because we didn't have the same ingredients. So they made it out of the um, okra and things like that so they can thicken up their gumbos and their stews and whatnot. So that's kind of how the, the, the dinners and stuff that we have, like the Southern, Southern Delights that we have, that's how they all came about. There's not many farmers today that there were back in the day. I feel like a lot of the kids who grew up back in the 60s and things like that, they were forced to farm because that was, you know, how they made their money. That was what they had to do to eat and survive. So a lot of them pretty much ran away from the farming culture. They, they went and did their own thing. So now it's, it's, very, it's pretty much dwindling. We have a little bit of farmers these days. All of the farmers that we do have are older. They're, you know, they're dying out basically. So they couldn't get the help that they needed. Right now, we're trying to pick it back up. We're trying to get them back. The NRCS are coming up now with things to help us get more farmers, their, F, their farm numbers and stuff like that so that we can have more farms. But it really has put a toll on them because now they don't, they don't really want to. It's, it's more struggling with farming now. So we're trying to get it back strong how it was. This is my high tunnel. I had one when I first started here. I started here last June. I was the high tunnel. I think they called me the High Tunnel Fellow, and I literally came here with no knowledge. I, I was in the FFA when I was in high school, but after that I left. So I came here, it was just a field of grass, dry grass. So basically, I raised this, this High Tunnel to have what, it's, what it is now. It was just some grass in here. This is supposed to be a training, a training area for our farmers. I'm supposed to be really showing them things that they could do on their farm, showing them the reason why a High Tunnel is good, especially in the low country just extending the crop seasons and things like that. I have a farmer school, um, just a program. I get kids to come here. Sure, I had lettuce and tomatoes, so they got to come, they got to harvest lettuce and tomatoes. They got to do a taste test, homegrown tomatoes versus store-bought tomatoes. I like to show them the proof. I like to have them get to taste it and see it, because kids do very well when they get to have their hands and mouths on things that, that we're talking about. So. I use this as an area. I got the outside too. And I also have a second high tunnel now that I just got like a few months ago. So I have more room to show them. And so I'm planting things that they can harvest. Beets, I'm gonna have onions, I'm gonna have carrots. I'm gonna have some broccoli. I'm gonna have things that are like, you know, very easy for them to pull up and see. I like the root vegetables for them because they like to see it when it comes out of the ground. So that's what that is over there. But this one pretty much is gonna be our production area. This is where I'm gonna have to be making money selling lettuce, cutting chop, we have that. So this is what this is for right now. Well, I grew up ignorant to how food is grown. So I really wanna try and help the kids who are like me, who didn't really know, who never got to really see any of this stuff. Cause there are kids out here who wanna farm. I feel like nobody thinks about that. Like there are kids who wanna do this. And now is the time to try and get them engaged in it so that in the future, these kids could grow up and maybe have a farm or something like that. Like we have to engage them while they're young. And I think it's important to really get them out here and and enjoy it, get out, out in nature, let them feel the sun, let them harvest something. I think that's really good for them.